Let's tie Will Sands STT Betis. This is a Tiemco 101 in a size 16. We'll tie this anywhere from a size 20 up to a size 16. The bead we're using is a black 1 16th inch tungsten bead. The thread is 17 aught uni. You tie the bead up to the, push it up to the front and tie our thread in and bring it back into the bend of the hook, just above the barb of the hook. I'm going to take some mallard flank. It also, you can also use lemon wood duck for the tail. And tie in those fibers right above the barb of the hook. I like the tails probably uh, half the length of the the shank of the hook. Bring the thread up, oh, just about where the thorax would end, begin at. Don't I like my flies real slim. Now I have some micro tubing. And this is in buckskin. Colors buckskin. You want an opaque, some kind of opaque tubing though. Especially for the, it'll, after you braid this, it'll be the underbody of the fly. So you need something light colored and opaque. Tying in at the thorax and bring that, put some tension on that tubing and bring it back to the tie-in point of the feathers. Now I'm also going to take some micro tubing and this is, happens to be pheasant tail. Tying it at the thorax and then stretch it out and once again bring it back into the bend of the hook. Just before the bend of the hook. Now I'm going to take my fly and move my vise around so I, it's in a better position to do the braiding for the abdomen section. So I'm tying it off here and I'm going to cut off my thread and then rearrange my hook so that it sits in a better position, one, to video and as well as to tie. Trim a bit of the excess uh, micro tubing. I've moved my hook over and you can see that I've got it in a better position for braiding. Now the trick with this stuff is, is to make sure that you're just tying a series of overhand knots and you make sure the light portion of it, the light, the buckskin in this case, is always the top when you, you roll over the top, when you tie an overhand knot. But then at the same time you make sure that your pheasant tail layer when you loop it over the hook is at the is towards you. So you take your buckskin portion, have it go over the pheasant tail color, and then loop it over the hook so that the pheasant tail tubing is on the top of the hook. And then draw it tight. Now, we're at the very beginning of this, and so you want it to taper. So this is, you put a lot of pressure on here. And just pull it pretty, pretty tight. Put a lot of tension on it. And see how the uh, pheasant tail is on the top? Once again, so overhand knot with the buckskin over the top. Loop it so that the pheasant tail portion tubing sits on top of the fly. And it's just a series 
of overhand knots that work itself up to the front of the fly. And you ease off the tension as you work your way up. So once again, over the overhand knot, see that loop that you create? Make sure that the pheasant tail is sitting on top. Bring it down and then cinch it down. And then ease off your tension as you build your way up to the thorax. Now on larger flies, if you were to make tie this fly, I don't usually tie it in larger than 16, but you could conceivably go to micro tube, excuse me, into midge tubing. But for size 16 down to 20, you definitely have to use the micro tubing. There's probably a course of eight, eight overhand knots is what you're having. So once again, overhand knot, with the buckskin on top, loop it over the fly with the pheasant tail facing you, and then cinch it down. And you can tell that you're doing it right because you can see that the buckskin's off to the bottom and also to the left and right, where and the pheasant tail's running across the top of the fly. If anything can happen here, you just got to make sure that the tubing lay down, lays down properly because it's possible to get a, 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 a little kink in there and it'll show up, but the fish won't matter and only you'll, be, only you'll see the mistake. Figure you got from here probably another four more knots. Overhand knot on the top, loop, slipped over the top of the hook, tighten it up, make sure your uh, pheasant tail's on top. So I'm just building my knots until I get to the thorax area. What's nice with this braid, you can actually release, release your time, your microtubing and it doesn't come unwound. Not like some of the other weaves, like the parallel weave. And just about there. We've got one more knot I'm going to do. Now, 
Now I'm going to re go back to the other vise and change the position of the hook again just so I can tie the rest of the fly. Now I'll reposition my hook. Now I'm just going to tie off that both of those pieces of microtubing. Put my thread back on my hook. Trim my butt end of my thread. I'm going to stretch out my tubing and then just tie it off. A little tension on here, and now I'll trim. I'm going to take a little piece of flashaboo for my wing case. And tie it right in at the thorax section. You can see how nice taper I got with the abdomen section there. And I'm going to take a piece of medallion sheeting. It's probably about an eighth of an inch wide. This just happens to be in mottled brown or olive brown. Tie it in. Now I'm going to take a piece of uh, Peacock curl. And tie in my thorax area. Bring my thread back behind the bead. And then wrap my peacock curl with parallel concentric wraps and bring it up right behind the that bead, that black tungsten bead. And trim off my excess peacock curl. Now I'm going to take the rest of that wood duck fiber and I'm going to trim it and it's going to become my legs. What I like to do is cut out that middle section of the stem so I get a perfect V. I don't have to count legs and how many I have on each side. I know that if I come down the middle it'll split evenly. See that little V I cut? I just cut the center stem. Now do a couple wraps right behind the bead. And now I'm going to pull on the stem of the feather. Before that, I'm going to take my medallion sheeting and put it up between there. So then I know for sure it'll split evenly. 
I bring over and I take a, a wrap or two. And then I pull on the stem of the feathers to show how, and so that I can see how much of the legs I want to leave out. Pull the flashy boo over. Make a couple wraps, and then I'm going to trim off my medallion sheeting, the stem of the wood duck flag, and the flash boo. A little nub in there. I'll tie off first, then I'll try to trim some of that excess material. Trim off my thread, and I can see I got a little bit of a nub of material, and so I'm going to track my nippers and try to get rid of some of that. Now I'm going to take a brown or redwood colored marker and touch up those thread wraps, as well as whatever excess material I had left from the medallion sheeting, as well as the flashaboo. I'm going to drop a little bit of UV knot sense. And I like it to go from the abdomen clear up into the bead. Um, UV resin doesn't stick very well to medallion sheeting or flashaboo. So if I go all the way over the top from the abdomen into the bead, I get a pretty good chance that it's not going to come off. Now I hit it with my laser. It's pretty thick, so I've got it on there for a little bit longer than I normally would. And that's Will Sands STD Betas. Thank you.